All right, let's work some example problems of making images with lenses. Imagine this. I make a lens by chopping a plastic ball in half such that one side of the lens is flat. The ball had a diameter of 3 centimeters and was made of a clear plastic with an index of refraction of 1.47. What is the focal length of the lens? So basically what we had what we have is we have a ball here. We've cut it in half. So got a flat side right here. Got a side here that's the radius was three centimeters, so that's three centimeters, and the index of refraction is 1.47. All right. So the lens maker's equation was this, right? One over f is equal to n minus one, one over r one minus one over r two. All right. So if we look at our ball here, right? Here's r one. R one is our three centimeters. So 3 centimeters and the index of refraction was 1.47. So we just have to plug these in. Now R2 is obviously infinity, right? So this is infinity, 1 over infinity 0, so we throw that away. And then we have to worry about R1. Is, it, is R1 positive or negative though? It's 3 centimeters, but it's either plus or minus 3 centimeters. Well remember, convex surfaces tend to focus light. And there's no minus sign here. There's a plus, you know, it's plus R1 here. So it must be plus 3 centimeters. And so then we can come along and we can say, well, 1 over F is equal to 1.47 minus 1 times 1 over 3 centimeters. So let's pull up Python. And we're going to calculate then. 1 over f. How's that for variable name? And that's going to be equal to 1.47 minus 1 divided by 3 centimeters. And then if we take 1 over 1 over f, looks like the focal length is 6.38 centimeters. Here we go. 6.38 centimeters. But wait a minute. What if we flip it around the other way? I didn't say which way light's going to go through. So imagine we have light going this way. Now R1 is equal to infinity. What's R2 going to be? Is it going to be plus or minus 3 centimeters? Once again, convex surfaces, if I have light coming in, right as I go out, we're going to bend away from the normal, and this is going to tend to uh, focus light. So convex surfaces make the focal length, make it more of a converging lens. All right. So that means R2 needs to be negative to cancel that minus sign. So R2 is going to be negative 3 centimeters, which means that 1 over f is equal to 1.47 minus 1 times 1 over infinity is 0, and then we have minus 1 over minus 3 centimeters. And that's exactly the same thing. This is a general thing. If you take a lens and calculate its focal length using the lens maker's equation, if you flip that lens around, you should get the same thing. <coughs> that might be a way to catch some errors when you do the homework or work an exam. Take your lens, flip it the other way, see if you get the same focal length. It should be the same. <coughs> oh, incidentally, too, you look at it and you think, well, yeah, you can apply a lot of logic. What if the lens were more curvy? What if it were more flat? Is it going to bend light more or less? All right, so there's a lot of things we can do to try and check our answers. <coughs> now, imagine I've got a lens. I don't know what its focal length is. Let's work a problem with that. Imagine you have a lens with a focal length of 15 centimeters. You place a 0.1 centimeter tall wasabi bean 20 centimeters from it. Where will the image form? How big will the image be? Will it be inverted or upright? And will the image be real or virtual? This is the same problem we worked in the example problem with mirrors, only now it's a lens. The equations are the same, though, so we should get the same answer, right? 1 over f is equal to 1 over p plus 1 over q, which means that q is equal to 1 over f minus 1 over p to the minus 1. All right, we plug things in. So f is 15 centimeters, p is 20. So we'll take uh, q is equal to 1 divided by 15 centimeters. Yeah, focal length is 15, and the distance is 20. Minus 1 divided by 20 centimeters. Raise that to the minus 1 power. And q is 60 centimeters. All right, so 60 centimeters. There we are. OK, so how far will it be? So where will it form? It will form 60 centimeters. Now this is 
a lens, right? And if Q is positive for a lens, it means the image is going to form on the side where our eye is, which is the opposite side from the object. So the image will be on the other side of the lens from the object, from the beam. All right. How big will it be? Well, the magnification is minus Q over P. So the height is the magnification times the, the height of the image is the magnification times the height of the object. So that's going to be 0 0.1 centimeters times negative Q, so negative 60 over um, 20. So it's going to be three times bigger. So it's going to be 0.3 centimeters. All right? Um, neg and then there's a minus sign right here because Q is positive. So it will be three centimeter, 0.3 centimeters tall. It will be inverted. And it will be real because Q is positive. All right? We can actually put a screen here and catch the image. So there we go, there's everything. Now let's see if we can work the same problem by drawing the lines, okay? So we're gonna have focal length of 15 centimeters, our beam will be 20 from it, and then our image will be 60 from it, so 20 and 60. So if we look at our grid here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 grids. Uh, let's let each one of them be 10 centimeters, all right? And so let's put our lens right here it's a converging lens. So put the little hat on here to remind me it's a converging lens. Here is where our object is, 20 centimeters. And one, two, three, four, five, our focal points will be right here. And one, two, three, four, five at 15 centimeters. So each one of these little squares is one centimeter. All right, now let's see where the image forms. So if I have a ray that's parallel, it's going to bend and go down through the focus. That was pretty bad, all right? But um, so I go down one every time I go one and a half. So the next one will be right here, then right here, and so forth. You really want to use a ruler when you do this. It's hard to use a ruler on my tablet, though, all right? OK, one that goes right to the center just keeps right on going. So boom, right there, right there, right there, and so forth, all right? And then our last ray, we only get three with lenses, remember. It's one that goes through the focus. Boom. So it's going to come down. Boom. 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 It's going to come down right here. It's going to come out straight. And there we go. That's where our image forms. All right. Now, the height here, so in this dimension, we said it was 0.1 centimeters. But now, it looks like it's three times as big. That's just what we calculated. This was 20 centimeters away, focus is 15. We said our image would be, what did we say here? It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 60 centimeters, and that's exactly what we said. It should be 60 centimeters away. Now, it's on the side with my eye. Here's my eyeball looking through the lens. So it is a real image. Q is positive, it's real, it's inverted. All right? OK. Now, let's try. Another problem, once again, this is one we worked with mirrors, now we're going to do it with lenses. Um, I've got the same setup, only I'm putting the beam less than one focal length away. All right? So um, Q, again, when we solve the equation, it's 1 over F minus 1 over P to the negative 1. When I plug that into my calculator now, that's Q is equal to 1 divided, the focal length is 15, minus 1 divided by how far did we put it away? Five centimeters. Five centimeters raised to the negative one power. Q is negative 7.5. All right. So that means Q is negative. That means that the image will be 0.75 centimeters away from the lens on the opposite side from our eye, which for a lens is on the same side as the object. All right. It will be. Um, virtual because Q is negative. The magnification is minus Q over P, right? So if P is positive and Q is negative, magnification will be positive, which means the image will be upright, not inverted. All right? So virtual upright. How big will it be? Well, H prime is just magnification times the height of the object. Height of the image is magnification times height of the object. So that's going to be negative, negative 7.5 over um, P is 5, all times 0 0.01 centimeters. The negative signs cancel. And what do we get? We're going to get 7.5 times 0 0.1 divided by 5. That's going to be 
0.15 centimeters. So there's the height, and it's positive, which means it's an upright image. Very good. Now, how do we draw the lines for this? Well, let's think about it. We have our 11 boxes. Our object is 5 centimeters away. Our image is going to be negative 7.5. All right? So everything's going to happen on one side of the lens, really. Um, well, except we still need to put the focal length on either side. So I'm going to need 15 on either side. Yeah, it looks like we should put our focal lengths, our focal points, as far as we can from the middle. So let's, boom, let's draw our lens right here. There's our lens. There's our optical axis. A axis. It's a divert. Or sorry, it's still a converging lens. Still a converging lens. All right, and let's let our object be. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, ten, fifteen. So let's let our let's let let's put our focal points here. All right, we'll use one of these little boxes a centimeter. So we are fifteen centimeters, and then our object is five centimeters away. So that would put our object right here, and let's let our object be two things tall. All right. Okay, so. That is 0.1 centimeters here. That's 5 centimeters in that direction. All right? A ray which is parallel is going to come down here. So it's going to go like that, kind of like that. OK, that doesn't look very good, but that's what it does. All right, one through the center is going to come straight through like that. And we can't draw a ray going through this focal point because it's on the other side. So we'll draw one as if it was coming from that focal point, whoops, as if it's coming from that focal point, it's going to come out parallel, right? And so then what we do is we extend these back. We say if my eye is over here, it looks as if all of these rays are coming um, from over here, all right? So if I extend this one back, it's going to come up and intersect right about there, and this one's going to intersect right about there. Boom, so it looks like my image is going to form right about there. All right, so it looks like my image is 50% cent, 50 taller than my object. That's what we should have found. So it's going to be 0.15 centimeters high. That's what we said over here, all right? And then we said it should be upright, and it is. And we said the distance, Q, should be negative 7.5. My eye is over here. My image is... Some things disappeared. Sorry about that, but I lost some rays here. All right, but my image is going to be back. We decided. Oh dang it! It like disappeared. Um, so let's look at these rays again. All right, a ray coming from this focal point will come out here. I don't know what happened, but it, they were all going to come back together right here. Sorry about that. So our image formed right there, and it's about five, six, seven and a half. It's about right, okay? If we did it with rulers, we would do much better, all right? So it looked like, looks like that worked. It is a virtual image, right? Because my eye, my eye is over here, and the image is on the opposite side from where I would look. I'd look through the lens. If I put a piece of paper there, I won't catch that image. It's a virtual image. All right, now let's consider a diverging lens. So imagine I have a focal length of negative 20. I place... Uh, 0.1 centimeter tall wasabi beam, 10 centimeters from it. Where will the image form? How big will the image be? Will it be inverted upright, real or virtual? All right, once again, this is a problem we worked with mirrors. Now it's with lenses, but it's the same equation, so we should get the same answer. We'll just interpret Q a little bit differently. All right, so Q is going to be 1 over F minus 1 over P to the minus 1, which is then going to be, so F is negative 20, P is 10. So we'll say Q is equal to 1 divided by negative 20 minus 1 divided by p, which is 10. Raise that to the minus 1 power. And it turns out q is negative 6.67. Negative 6.67. All right, so where will it form? 6.67 centimeters from the lens, right, on the opposite side from our eye. And since we look through a lens, the that means it's going to be on the same side as the object. All right, Q is negative. That means it's going to be a virtual image. All right? Okay, magnification is negative Q over P again. So the height of the image is just the height times the magnification. So that's going to be 0.1 centimeters 
multiplied by negative Q is negative Q is 6.67 divided by P which is 10 alright and so we get now I'm going to keep extra digits in my calculation so 0.1 times negative Q divided by P is 10 point zero it's going to be point zero six six seven centimeters tall alright so there we go now how would I do this by drawing lines okay so I've got focal lengths of 20 so let's draw our lens right here it's a diverging lens so I'll put arrows like that to remind me of that here's my optical axis all right, one, two, three, four, um, five. Let's put our focal point right here. One, two, three, four, five. Right, so five of these is 20 centimeters. You know what? Let's just to make life easier. Let's put it four away. Then each one of them is just five centimeters. Five, ten, three. Right? Then it's just okay. All right, and our object we said is 10 centimeters. So. Our object's going to be right here. We know it's going to get smaller, so let's make it, uh, let's go up this high for our object. All right? Okay. Now, a ray of light, which is parallel, is going to bend towards the focus. It's going to go one, two, three, four, and three. Okay, that's not a very nice. Okay, there we go. One that goes through the center just goes through the center, um, except I'm doing this completely wrong because this is a diverging diverging lens so I don't draw one that's parallel doesn't do that it doesn't go towards that one it goes away from this one so it's gonna go off like that as if it were coming from that focal point and then one that goes in as if it's going to this focus right here will come out straight alright and then we look at this and we say project this back it looks like our image is gonna form somewhere right in here if I had done this more carefully with a ruler, we'd be more right on track. But it looks like it's probably going to be a little more than 5 centimeters. And we said 6.67. Okay, so that's reasonable. If I'd used it, I would have gotten that better. But remember, our three lines are one that's parallel bends as if it was coming from that focus because it's a diverging lens. One that's going towards that focus bends out and comes out parallel because it's a diverging lens. And the one that goes through the center just is undeflected for all lenses and uh, we got a virtual image just as we expected. All right, there you go.